Hello everybody, welcome back to English class. My name is Elnura and I'm your English teacher. Today we're going to go backward and have a look at the history of communication. Let's get started. Every communication involves at least one sender, a message and a recipient. This may sound simple, but communication is actually a very complex subject. The transmission of the message from sender to recipient can be affected by a huge range of things. These include our emotions, the cultural situation, the medium used to communicate, and even our location. The complexity of why good communication skills are considered so desirable by employers around the world, accurate, effective, and unambiguous communication is actually extremely hard. A communication therefore has three parts. That is, the sender, the message, and the recipient. Basically, we communicate by using the tools available to us, namely symbols. Verbal and nonverbal language are essential sets of commonly accepted symbols to which we attach meaning. Spoken or verbal communication which includes face-to-face -face telephone, radio, or television, and other media. Nonverbal communication covering body language, gestures, how we dress or act, where we stand, and even our scent. There are many subtle ways that we communicate with others. For example, the tone of voice can give clues to mood or emotional state. Whilst hand signals or gestures can add to a spoken message. Written communication, which includes letters, emails, social media, books, magazines, the internet, and other media. Until recent times, a relatively small number of writers and publishers were very powerful when it came to communicating the written word. Today we can all write and publish our ideas online, which has led to an explosion of information and communication possibilities. And the last one is visualizations. They can be graphs and charts, maps, logos, and other visualizations can all communicate messages. Before human beings created languages and alphabets, they communicated with both sound and body language. Arguably, the earliest humans related feelings and stories through sounds, as well as body and hand gestures. Some of these stories became illustrations probably drawn in the dust on the ground before eventually developing in the petroglyphs or paintings created on cave walls. Well guys, now let's watch a video to have a rest and review the topic. What differentiates us human from animals is the way we communicate with each other. Here we will show you a brief history of how communication system evolved. The whole journey of communication started with the cavemen. The cavemen used to gather around fire to discuss their day-to-day -day activities. We can compare this to modern day social networking sites such as Facebook. The one sudden day they decided to record their activities or knowledge. The cavemen then started to inscribing on the caves. We can compare this to modern day blogging. The problem with this communication method was it was localized. When people started moving out of the cave, long distance communication became very important. Smoke signal. This was the first long distance communication. It was used in Northern America where each tribe has its own signaling system. A smoke from top of the hill signified danger. 
Smoke signal was also used in ancient China. The soldiers stationed at the Great Wall would alert for danger using smoke signal from tower to tower. In this way they could transmit message as far as 750 kilometers within a few hours. The smoke signal is still used in Vatican to indicate the selection of new pope. Pigeons Due to their natural homing ability pigeons were extensively used for long distance communication. The pigeons were used by Persians, Romans, Greeks, Muggles. In 19th century pigeons were also used to transmit stock quotations from one city to another. Cherimi, a homing pigeon, was awarded the French War Cross for her services during World War I. TV series Game of Thrones has shown the use of raven instead of pigeon for a long-distance communication. As humankind's communication abilities developed, other permanent symbols evolved – wooden totem poles and Egyptian hieroglyphs, as well as religious symbols like the Star of David and the Christian cross. Even though scholars were creating ways to write languages, many people were unable to obtain a formal education and couldn't read these developing alphabets. Today, signage has developed into trademarks. Other identifying forms of communication from the past and present include insignia worn by military forces. These forces often routinely carried flags representing their countries. Before electronic communications evolved, military forces found other ways to relay their plans. For example, Roman soldiers used torches to signal their troops to attack. Even animals were used to communicate important information. For example, carrier pigeons were instrumental during World War I. Native Americans used smoke signals and drums, which were actually very effective and could be seen and heard from great distances. Another valuable form of communication from the past and still used today is Morse code. Sign language is used as well. Individuals communicate every minute of the day through nonverbal gestures and their choice of dress. So here's the task to consider the following photographs. Try to guess the socioeconomic status of these people, their relationships, age and occupations. What about this guy? Can you please try to guess his socioeconomic status, relationship, age, and occupation? As you can see, there are old age pensioners. And our task is to try to guess their socioeconomic status, relationship, age, and occupation. As you know, advertisements also communicate, and they send us messages. Sometimes they can be hidden, so that we should decode and understand them. And now, let's try. What can you determine from looking at the following advertisement? 
well, it says help so that no one have to come here for food. As for me, here the hidden message is that we shouldn't waste food. What about this advertisement? What can you determine from looking at the following advertisement? Well, it can be connected to the political system of any country. Well, nowadays we use cell phones, internet, email, twittering, and live telecommunications to communicate and contact to each other. Well, guys, let's learn some modern means of communication. The first one is telegraph. It is electronic way to send messages through a wire which could be translated into a message. It was developed by Samuel Morse and other inventors. Morse sent the first recorded telegraph in 1844 from Washington to Maryland. Telegraph that uses electrical signals usually conveyed via telecommunication lines on radio. The electromagnetic telegraph is a device for human-to-human -human transmission coded text messages. It is the first form of electrical telecommunications. Later, electrical telegraph networks permitted people and commerce to almost instantly transmit messages across both continents and oceans. The second modern means of communication is landlines. It was invented by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. The first landline telephones sprang into popularity and common use in the 1950s. The telephone referred to as a phone is a telecommunication device that transmits and receives sounds, usually the human voice. They are a point-to-point -point communication system to allow two people separated by large distances to talk to each other. The landlines have long been considered indispensable to businesses, household, and now one of the most common appliances in the developed world. It is a collection of computers and other hardware components interconnected by communication channels that allow sharing of resources and information. Computer and dial-up internet was invented by Tim Berners-Lee in 1990. Do you remember the funny dial-up tones that computers used to make when trying to connect to the Internet back in the 90s? The first SMS message or text message was sent in 1992. All it read was Merry Christmas. Now almost 10 trillion texts are sent each year. Electrical mail, also known as email, is a method of exchanging digital messages from an author to one or more recipients. Modern email operates across the internet or other computer networks, or you can use even gadgets. Some early email systems required that the author and the recipient both be online at the same time. Today's email systems are based on a store and forward model. Smartphones and tablets. The next modern means of communication are smartphones and tablets. In the 1960s, computers used to take up entire rooms. Now devices that fit in our pockets have that power and speed a thousand times over. 
Smartphones keep us connected on so many levels, including phone calls, SMS, internet, and so on. A device that can make and receive telephone calls over a radio link moving around a wide geographic area. It does so by connecting to a cellular network provided by a mobile phone operator, allowing access to the public telephone network. The first handheld mobile phone was demonstrated by Martin Cooper of Motorola in 1983. From 1990 to 2011, worldwide mobile phone subscription grew from 12.4 million to over 5.6. The Internet is a global system of interconnected computer networks that use the standard Internet protocol suit to serve billions of users worldwide. It is a network of networks that consists of millions of private, public, academic, business and government networks of local to global scope that are linked by a broad array of electronic, wireless and optical networking technologies. The Internet carries an extensive range of information resources and services, such as the interlinked hypertext documents of the World Wide Web and the infrastructure to support email. Tom Anderson and Mark Zuckerberg are founders of MySpace and Facebook, and they started the social revolution in 2003. A social networking service is an online service, platform, or site that focuses on facilitating the building of social networks or social relations among people who, for example, share interests, activities, backgrounds, or real-life connections. If you have a classmate from high school or college you haven't seen in a while, just punch their name into a social networking site and become their friend again within minutes. A social network service consists of a representation of each user, often a profile, his or her social links, and a variety of additional services. Most social network services are web-based or provide means for users to interact over the internet, such as email, for example, Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, and so on. The communication revolution has brought around many positive effects. One example is easing political tension around the world. Important political figures can now resolve their differences or make important decisions without having to travel hundreds of miles or meet face to face. The business world has evolved. Companies can now communicate faster, more efficiently, and therefore turn more profits. More businesses can make themselves seen through the internet, which allows a large diversity of companies to emerge. Communication company like Microsoft is turning an enormous profit, allowing them to make technological advances and offer and develop more services for the public. It also increases employment and therefore decreases poverty in more developed countries. It breaks down social and worldwide barriers allowing people to interact across the globe, different races, cultures, backgrounds, and statuses interact. Sometimes, however, simply talking face to face is truly the most effective type of communication. And this fact is why students should learn how to craft and deliver effective speeches. 
So guys, now you know what is communication and aware of its brief history. But let me say that communication must be hot, that is, honest, open, and two-way. Have a nice day. See you next class.